Welcome back to Telltale. I'm Greg. I'm Emily. And we're here with another short dick. Short dick. A little um, dick. <laughs> yeah, just a we're little dick. We're having a little we, Philip K. Dick short all, story. We love little dicks. We love the little dick. <laughs> and, uh... I love the jokes we can make about Philip K. Dick just they because just of his never name. Stop. It's just <laughs> you just you just walk right into it with a name like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So so anyway, this is another short story. And this one is a short story, not a novelette. Mm-hmm. And we're still stuck in May of nineteen fifty three. He he published a lot of stories in, in May and a lot of stories in June. He of must have like spent all winter just writing the shit out of stuff and then just pounding it out in publication that following uh-huh. summer. I swear. Or maybe he had all this stuff written over the past like four years. Yeah, you never know. And then all of a sudden he just found pu- people that were willing yeah. to publish. I'm it, popular so enough it just now. All got published just all deal at them once. out. It, it's candy. interesting. But anyway, I'm, the checks must have been nice for those two yeah, months. Yeah, seriously. Um, so we're talking about a story he published in the magazine Science Fiction Quarterly in May of 1953 called The World She Wanted. I had a lot of feelings about this story. I had a <laughs> lot of feelings. And this one, I'm finally not... In this paycheck. one was in We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, another Philip K. Dick collection. We can remember it for you wholesale and other classic stories by Philip K. Dick. But it's also available online, PDFs. Just mm-hmm. do a search. You'll find this Google for it. free. Google. So, um, I'll take. I'll do the synopsis and then we can get, in, get into it. Get into it. The basic story here is a woman walks into a man's life and tells him he is living in her world. That everyone has their own world the way they really want it to be, and this world is hers. That's the basic plot of this story. Want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so... The audacity! The lion, the witch, and the audacity of this bitch, right? Like, this was kind of a frustrating read for me. But it was also kind of funny. So it takes, like, the concept of that... Who was it that wrote Candide? Tolstoy? Voltaire. Voltaire! I knew it was one of those. (laughs) Couldn't remember. But Voltaire's concept of this is the best of all possible worlds. And in this case, this is the best of all possible worlds for her. Mm -hmm. So everyone who exists in this world outside of her is only partially real. And there are parallel and slightly overlapping worlds where everybody has their own specific world where everything ends up going their way. Just mm-hmm. turning up aces all the time for them mm-hmm. specifically. And she believes that this one is hers. So she walks up to this guy who's in a dingy bar and says, You're the one. We're getting married. We're engaged. And convinces him to just string along with her and goes and buys her a corsage. And they talk about wedding stuff. And then she somehow inherits this huge mansion from an uncle who died. That she didn't even know existed. And like everything just seems to fall into place for her while this guy's just dragging along with her and just like, but what about me? What about what makes me happy? And so it's just a really kind of like almost dark comedy Mm -hmm. kind of story. Mm -hmm. But like this woman is like, I had a hard time because she came across as really self-righteous. But, I mean, who wouldn't be if you were just, like, the luckiest person in the world? This kind of reminded me of um, Ringworld with Larry Nevin, where you had that one female character. Yeah, where she's just, like, she was literally bred to be lucky. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of this concept here, is this woman just never got hurt by anything and has always Mm -hmm. had things go her way and just suddenly things would happen well for her. And things would just fall into place. And so she believed that this was the best of all possible worlds for her. And it was her world specifically. Mm -hmm. And things just went the way she needed them to. Mm -hmm. Or wanted, even not even wanted, just like, they just kind of happened. It's not like she actually wanted these things. It just worked out. Things work out in her favor. Yeah, in her favor. And it just happens to be something like, oh, that's a pleasant surprise. I'm happy with this kind of thing. Uh-huh. So it's just a really interesting and kind of frustrating read because you kind of just want her to get like slapped in the face. <laughs> and then there's a twist at the end. And she mm-hmm. does. And I really enjoyed this story for the most part, despite what a frustrating read it was. But I don't necessarily think it was one of his best. 
I gotta disagree there. Okay. Be- because, um, even though the story is a little bit over the top, mm-hmm. like you were saying, it it comes out of philosophy. Mm-hmm. The idea of how do we know that anything outside of ourselves even exists? Yeah. Everything. We know evolution. everything we experience, everything we see, hear, touch, taste, smell mm-hmm. is coming to us through our senses. And how do we trust those? What if our senses are wrong? Mm. So each of us is kind of like an island in ourselves mm-hmm. experiencing this world that we live in. It is our world. It is our experience mm-hmm. not yours this is my experience that all mm-hmm. all i really have a perspective for is what i am experiencing yes i can talk to you and you can communicate with me mm-hmm. but how do i know that isn't my imagination making yes. up your entire conversation yeah isn't that like hinduism like everything's an illusion or yeah. something like that yeah that's cool and existentialism yes. where we only know that ourselves exist and maybe even that doesn't exist yeah even we how do don't we know exist. how do we know we're not just a dream in some other god's mind or if we're real oh, what, at all the, what was the title of the what book i saw today if 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 this book is real you're in the wrong universe yes <laughs> the one you shared on the instagram yeah. chat yes um, it it's that whole concept of and and it's a very important philosophical concept mm-hmm. because it it has to do with how how we know things mm-hmm. what what is reality yeah what are what laws and theories are we experiencing can mm-hmm. we trust what we're experiencing is the rest of the world really there and is it this way or that way or and Philip Dick had this concept that there was this multiplicity of universes Mm-hmm. coexisting and in particular he would later on use that in in books like the man in the high castle mm-hmm. where he imagined this alternate world of america where the nazis and, and japanese won and world war ii and divided winning. up the yep. united states and this there's alternate this universe and thing. there's this writer sitting writing a book about our world where we won Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you know he's constantly playing with those realities and and he really did think that was real Mm -hmm. Um, flow my tears the policeman said is based on a um a dream he had where this woman comes to his door Mm -hmm. and then he said in reality this woman came to his door Mm -hmm. and um, he thought that what was happening is this alternate world was entering into his world mm-hmm. and that this was, he, he really believed this. He mm-hmm. really believed this was true. Yeah. And he based his novels after that on it. And he started seeing how his real, what he thinks it was his real world experience was actually based upon his earlier novels. Mm-hmm. He actually already wrote about these experiences, but with slight changes yeah. in his earlier work. Stories like this one. Yeah. A lot of people do that too with the experience of deja vu. Mm-hmm. Where they believe it's something that's in alignment with another universe where they're like experiencing it again. Mm-hmm. Or at a similar timeline where the timelines are align- aligning and things like that. But as as we move forward through his fiction, the things mm-hmm. that we're seeing in this story are going to become even more important to his fiction it's going to be a major theme and this is again one of those those beginning Mm -hmm. stories where these themes are starting to take shape in his in his literature yeah i think for me like the reason i didn't think of it that deeply is because i was so caught up in like the perception of narcissism in the Mm -hmm. female character and that was super frustrating to me but that's the whole thing he's mm-hmm. I think he's trying to get at is is she really being narcissistic or yeah. is it real? Is it really happening for her? Like is, is this true? really her lit world? Is it really And then her there's world? a twist. So you know, am I just a figment of your world? Mm. Am I I'm a pigment of my infatuation. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know we what don't I am. Know. And that you know, there's a whole branch mm-hmm. of philosophy that's that's all 
goes mm-hmm. down that rabbit hole of thinking about all those things. Yes. And Philip Dick followed that through much of his fiction after this story. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't think of it that deeply. I was just more wrapped up in like, wow, this woman's toxic. How dare she? What a bitch. But if he was the same way, I'd be like, yeah, what a douchebag. He's a toxic <laughs> asshole. I would have just, just been angry and frustrated. But I think, too, like, I've met people like that in my reality where everything just seems to happen for them. Mm-hmm. And they don't seem to experience hardship. And then it's like, they just make you mad because it's like, <laughs> I'd like a break every once in a while. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's why I was so wrapped up. And I didn't necessarily think of it as philosophically. I mean, I did sort of because I made the relationship between that and Candide, mm-hmm. which was also also a great read. Yeah. Everybody should read Candide. Mm-hmm. Wonderful dark comedy. We should do a video on it one of these yes, days. Yes, we should. Also, if you can see the I, one of the play productions, stage productions of it. Musical by Leonard Bernstein. Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. Had the pleasure of seeing that one in Chicago. It's pretty great. Okay. Loved it. I've only heard it on the radio. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I enjoyed it, so. But yeah, it's... Uh, okay. So I did kind of get the phil- philosophy of it, but I think I was just so frustrated by the toxicity because it's like, oh, narcissist, okay. how self-righteous. Which only goes to prove it all depends on what perspective really about you perspective. approach a story with. Yes. Um, that one person may hate a, a story or book and another person may love it, but the difference, you know, it's not that the work of... It's not that the book itself is good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's that different people are going to approach it in different ways and get different things out of it. Mm -hmm. You can have two people that both love a book, but both see it from a different perspective Mm -hmm. and get something different out of it. That's the great thing about literature. Mm -hmm. And is it at all real? We don't know. (laughs) None of it's real. None of this is real. It's all just a dream. We'll just wake up dead one day. (laughs) All, all fine. Anyway. You, you don't wake up dead. Just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's absurd humor. Just enjoy okay. it. <laughs> okay, okay. You're like, no. So, well, that's all I got. Yeah, that's kind of all I have, too. I think I, it's a great story. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it, for sure, but I also had that, like, inner conflict of frustration, so. I also didn't mm-hmm. like the way the female was portrayed. No, but you know like i say it if you if you're looking at her if you're looking at it as just a story and and looking at her personality she does come across kind of narcissistic mm-hmm. but on the other hand what if she's right yeah then she's I not mean she has no evidence to say otherwise like you know, it just but, keeps happening but if she's right about this then mm-hmm. she's not narcissistic she's brilliant and making a <laughs> she's p- <God>. conceptual breakthrough <laughs> yeah well i don't know that either yeah. just it's her world. caught up in her circumstances Mm -hmm. and everybody else is in a separate set of circumstances and i think to a to a large degree even if you think we all live in the same reality we all do kind of flow through our own portion of it going in our own directions and that's true but i think the other thing for me is that i tend to lean more collectivist where our relationships make a lot of us like, we are very... Inf- there's pieces of other people in us for different reasons. Like, there are phrases that I picked up from friends. And there's, like, thoughts that I've developed over time because someone else inspired that in me. There's... A, I'm just... I see that humanity is far more interconnected. And I think that's why it rubs me the wrong way is because it is so individualist. And that's so outside of the way I think because I realize that the world is a network of people and that makes a lot of people significant to each other just because of the way relationships are. And I'm kind of the opposite of that. I Mm -hmm. I do realize that none of us would be here if we didn't act as a society. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, my whole life, I've felt kind of separated out from everything and Mm -hmm. on my own and kind of disconnected from things. Mm -hmm. So I do have more of a perception of my world and these people around me Mm -hmm. being kind of separate from my life. Yeah. And I think... I know a lot of... 
people of like older generations tend to experience that a lot too which i think is interesting but i also see like there's a lot more cases of narcissism in my generation and younger now which is why it's so interesting i've i've had a hard time relating to other people my age because i am collectivist but that doesn't mean i don't recognize that people's actions affect each other we are mm -hmm. not islands no. there is a butterfly effect so to speak of things or a ripple effect that can happen when certain things happen mm -hmm. and it just depends on the scale of severity or the scale of influence mm -hmm. that affects that so i don't know it's 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 definitely a lot of fun stuff to play with but i think that's why i had such a hard time with this where it's like how can you say these other people aren't real, per se, if they are just as much an integral part of your happiness as she claimed? How can they not be real except by her perceptions? So she's not saying they aren't real. She's saying they're just actors in her play. Well, she, but she does say, she says, play. you're not real. You're partly real. That's what yeah, she's they're saying. They're partly real, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, but why? But they have their own real world. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere. But in her world, they're just actors walking through the stage. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you're walking down the street talking to your friend, there's all kinds of people around you. Mm -hmm. They're not really a part of your conversation with your friend. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're there. Yeah. They're part of it. They're just in the background. Mm -hmm. There's bit players. But she's even saying that he's just the player too. He's not mm -hmm. even that integral of a part, which I'm like, but if it's... In her if, story. Yeah, but, like, if that determines your happiness, then is your happiness even real? Is it really your world, then, if it's not actually there to make you happy? If it's no, only partly real? I'm blowing holes in this one! <laughs> I don't know. True. It just brings up a lot of questions, but I think that's why... But I, I think that was his, that's what mm -hmm. his intent was, was yeah. to raise all those questions. Yeah. I, oh, I agree. It's just and I think he did it purposely the way he did. Mm -hmm. Where... You sit there and go, no. Yes, no. No, well, Maybe. but she's making a point, but no. But she's too much is. of a narcissist. That's stupid. You yeah. Know, you just keep going back and forth Humanity with that. Humanity is too integral. He, he we are a network. Really we are a web. throws some, yeah. some spanners And I wish I knew if this was meant to be satire or not. That was the other part that got me. Is this meant to be satire? Is this some kind of social commentary on culture? I, or not? I don't think it's quite satire, mm -hmm. but I don't want to say tongue-in-cheek either. Not totally deadly serious, mm -hmm. but having fun with reality, yeah, having the playful fun question. with people's minds. Playful questions. Yeah. Yeah, this one messed me up. So, I loved it. I yeah. Loved, I love that. So. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the challenge of it. I enjoyed mm -hmm. kind of being frustrated. I love things that make me feel stuff, but that didn't lessen the frustration for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got to say about it. And that's all I got to say. Uh, and batteries flashing, of course. I know! So I'll make this short. Like us, subscribe to us, leave your comments, come back for more videos, and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and of course right here on YouTube. And we will Bye. see you next time. Bye.